Hello, Lehman, Brandon Santo. Welcome back to the channel. We are here today for our third installment of the Weighted Debate. Welcome. Thank you for Hi. having me. Hi, Brandon. Last week, we had so much Hi. fun. I said, let's do it again. And you guys were both game. Uh, we're currently waiting on, because today is Tuesday, is it January 19th today? Or January 18th, right? So we're currently waiting on the current uh, restrictions here in BC with regards to gym closures. And off camera, Brian and I were just talking about whether or not those closures are going to be extended. And he was saying that gyms actually might open in the next two days. They, they are expected to announce the reopening of gyms starting, thurs, like starting Thursday and that there will be quite a few restrictions. And I think the private studios, you know, the studios that you and I coach at, I think uh, we're going to be okay. I think it's more of a target of the big box gyms and the commercial gyms. But again, I don't want to count the chickens before they hatch because we've been misled before. So let's just, that's just yeah. go trick or treat. We'll go trick or treating after this. <laughs> totally. Because I mean, last yeah. night we were just talking about this last night, they said uh, the restrictions are extended indefinitely. So yeah, that, yeah who yeah. knows what that and means. That was, and that was just a cover up to say, no, don't start, don't start opening yet until the yeah. PHO talks. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they kind of had to make that move. That's right. Well, guys, let's get going here on our first topic of the day. We've got three to go through. Uh, first topic for the way to debate. Ladies only sections in gyms, are they needed? Or are they <laughs> underscoring a persuasive problem in the industry? Um, women are very uncomfortable in the gym training with men. Uh, sometimes that, that does happen, right? That's very common, especially in commercial gyms. So they have these ladies only sections. And I was just telling Brandon off camera, I didn't even know that those actual areas still exist in commercial gyms. It's been so long since I've trained in a commercial gym. I, didn't, I knew they were really popular back in the 90s, early 2000s. I thought gyms got rid of them, but apparently no, they're, they're still still, they're still here. So in your opinion, guys, um, how can we create a better atmosphere for females and males to coexist in studios, gyms, in the workplace? Brandon, I'm going to go to you on this one first. Yeah, um, I brought this up because it is a controversial topic, but it's an important one. Um, to answer the question, are they needed ladies only sections and I say yes should they be needed I don't want them to be needed um I think we got a lot of, and being a part of the 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 male gender here um I think the males have a lot to learn from this um having come from and I think you have many years ago as well I mean come from being a trainer in a box gym in a commercial gym and then even exploring it in a in a studio where it is predominantly male um, I think we have a lot of work to do in, in, in terms of getting any sort of gym. It doesn't even matter if it's a commercial gym or a private studio for um, getting them to feel comfortable in the gym, getting them to make uh, feel confident in the gym and comfortable in, own, in their own skin in the gym. Um, I think that's a necessary first step. And I say this because I went through a period five, six years ago where 80 to 90 percent of my clientele were female. Um, and even though they were comfortable and I'm very thankful they were comfortable around me and uh, I made it all about them. It wasn't an easy switch for them. And it wasn't easy even getting them to their first session. Um, after the consultation, they didn't even want to come back. And they came back, thankfully, and it was good. But they only wanted to be with me. And I'm not saying because I'm this fantastic coach. It's just that- You're they, the best. I, no, no, no. <laughs> we, we built rapport. That it's instilling trust. I mean, yeah. I mean, Bob Smith could have done the same thing if he has those same sort of skills. I'm, just, I'm not even suggesting that. But- just, um, you know, observational and a little bit of anecdotal um, um, experience here where, you know, I've had clients speak to me about it. Let's go on another side. Uh, it's too alpha on that side. It's too noisy on that side. We mentioned gym etiquette before. Um, I do think it's a problem. Um, not as much so in a private studio, but I mean, we want to get to a point, we talk about equity and equality among genders as well. Um, I think we want to get to a point where we don't want these ladies only sections and ladies feel comfortable anywhere they go. I mean, we could go on and on about workplaces, but let's focus our, our expertise is in the gym. So let's yeah. focus on gyms. But I think we have a lot of work to do as males. We yeah. need to be better. But yeah. um, so I'll, we can start with that. But also, I'd love to hear the other side of the equation from Pilar, because I don't know all the solutions to it, because it's what's keeping females in the gym for a lot of for a lot of places and that's why it's there club yeah. 16 did it did it um and they and they, they were really successful so i mean when they, they transferred we had a club 16 in kitsilano and when they yeah. when they closed down and they got transferred over to a fitness world in kitsilano a lot of ladies were upset because it was a ladies only gym so anyways oh, okay sorry. interesting yeah so anyways I would love club, to just so club, six, club 16 uh that's trevor linden's gym correct okay yeah okay. yes yeah. All right. this, is uh, a, this is several years ago there was there was a 
either, either a Ron Zelko or a Club 16 only somewhere in Pizzolano and they yeah. shut it down. Yeah. And then, yeah, Fitness World, Steve Nash back then bought yeah. the rights to them. And so they got rid of the ladies only section. Is what yeah. you're saying, though. Okay. Well, and well, well, yeah, they brought it. We had a ladies only section in the fitness world, but they yes. were in it, but they were upset at the fact they didn't have the whole gym to themselves and they felt uncomfortable. I understand. Okay. I get it. Pilar, what's your view on this? Uh, you want me to talk? I might get some uh, bad opinions on this one, but bring it. I female. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you are. I think uh, for a lot of women to get them started in the in the gym, yes, they don't feel comfortable with their own bodies and they need that. Are they necessary? I don't think so. I'm all about, if anything, I think it will empower a lot of men and you should be, as a woman, you should be empowered to like, you know what? I'm going to go there and even lift heavier than you may be lifting, you know? Yeah. Uh, I've never trained in the women's section area. If I have, I've always gotten there like, uh, you should not be training here because you train too heavy. The, that kind of you know yeah, yeah. um needed i don't think they need it it's a gym right. simple okay but i do understand there's a lot of female out there women out there that yeah. they might feel comfortable and they will feel more comfortable in not only you know ladies only section yeah uh but again i don't think i don't know I'm, I'm all about equality i'm all about doesn't mean because you're a male or i'm a female there should be some sort of different um and I think if we do that, we're, we're ensuring the, the gender um, not, not being even. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. Know you, you, know, you, you want gender equality. We're re ensuring, oh, we need special, we need a special area for us women to train. I'm like, guess what? You, you're there to train. Right. You're not there to, I don't know. It's, it's a very interesting topic. That, it, no, I don't think it's needed. And I don't think I, they should be available. Even though you're saying that you're going to get a lot of complaints, um, I think it sounds like you agree with me because even you said there's this inequality among yeah. uh, females and males, and you even said it yourself, there's some females who actually do feel really uncomfortable. Even if they go to a gym for a year or two, they feel uncomfortable, and they would prefer a gym that had the ladies only section. So there is an underlying problem here. And I think it may, you can say all you want about females wanting to stay comfortable, um, get the confidence that they can work out anywhere in the gym it doesn't have to be a ladies only section but it sounds like um there is a problem because you didn't say males have a problem of feeling uncomfortable in the gym or going to a certain yeah. spot because they don't like it so it is a it is a problem that females feel and in, and in, i guess as males nick we have a, a bit of a responsibility a little bit in terms of shifting that reframing it and making a shift so that you know i mean why should there be a ladies only section and we yeah. know why now but i mean we need to kind of uh, move the pendulum the other way what do you we, think you both bring up great points and what i was saying to you before is i didn't even know that women's only section still existed in commercial gyms but i will say this when i first started personal training uh going back to early 2003-4 i remember having when I would start my group classes, I would I would advertise ladies only leg day, uh, you know, yeah. ladies upper body. I would only have women's only classes, and I would have men's classes. Um, and then it wasn't until probably about two thousand seven eight where people were like, "Well, can I join this class? Can I cross over to this class?" And I'm like, uh, "I don't know if that'll work." And it did work. And now my classes they're they're equal 50 50 men women. It actually I don't even give it a second thought now. Um, so I think the times have changed a little bit when it comes to small group training anyway, with having men and women, because I think if you go back 15, 20 years ago, you did have a lot of women's only classes. Um, and now I don't even advertise those anymore. I, my, my old ladies leg days that I used to advertise, I would say they're 50, 50 men. I have a Saturday morning group class I train in. It's easily 50, 50 men, women. Um, so times have changed with that, but I will tell you this, I, I have a lot of friends that are women and they tell me when they go to commercial gyms, one of the problems that they experience and Pilar, you might be able to relate to this is that every time they go to the gym and they're trying to work out, guys always approach them. They're hitting on them. They're talking to them. And that's why they kind of want to have their own space, their own area, not because they feel like the guys are necessarily outlifting them or intimidating them. It's just more like the guys are annoying them. So Pilar, do you have any experience with this? No, men don't approach me. <laughs> <They're afraid. laughs> That's because you're a million, times, <laughs> a million times stronger than they are. Well, because I've men trained are, with men are insecure. <laughs> yeah, men are insecure. I'm too. very unapproachable at the gym. <laughs> but I, but I, do, I do see how, you know, a lot of men go to pick up women at the gym. But listen, I have a lot of single um, girlfriends 
Then they go to become men of the gym. So why is it okay? So, for one so you've, obse- you've observed it though. You've seen, have you seen, maybe not to you because uh, just cause um, you're, you're a confident person and you don't mess around and people don't mess with you. Uh, but you have you actually observed it or have you at the very least had somebody say to you, you know, guys are hitting me on the gym or they're creeping me out. They're always looking at me. They're watching me walk by. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's not just a gym thing. That's everywhere. But I mean, have you seen that, Pilar? There's some very creepy guys at the gym. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, okay. that, and that sucks because that's something that Brandon and I don't experience. Like I never have women ogling me when I'm at the gym. That doesn't happen. You know, I, I have female friends that say, I don't want to do a bent over deadlift or a hip thrust when there's a bunch of guys staring at me. And yeah. I, 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 not that I can relate to it on any level, but I understand. So with that said, any solutions? What do we do? Brandon? Or what do we do? Uh, okay, well, I'll start. <laughs> um, we, need, uh, we need to talk to, like, as males, I think we need to lead with this because we can't tell females we'll just get comfortable. Yeah, um, this is a pervasive problem in our industry, but it is. A, in, I mean, I'll stay in my lane, but it's a problem in many workplaces. Yes. Okay. You just think of the office. Think of offices. Uh, think of uh, the police department. Think of many different uh, avenues of work. Okay. So it is a problem, and males need to be leaders with this. I mean, we can just rely. We don't want to wait. I mean, women have complained about this, and even Pilar said it herself. It doesn't. We don't need to wait for. 5,000 complaints. I mean, just a few complaints is enough. And the fact that the majority are female tells us that, well, it's, it's a problem that males create. Yeah. Okay. We females are, I mean, yes, when there's, there's a bit of rivalry, we might feel uncomfortable because of other males, same thing with females. They might feel uncomfortable because they feel insecure another, around another female. She might be stronger. That's human nature. That's everywhere too. But the fact that there's this divide, you know, and we have to make, we have to maintain this ladies only section because ladies do feel uncomfortable in gym. I think it starts as males being, I mean, <laughs> I'm not a problem solver for all of this, but I mean, I think it's, it, we're raising awareness just through this, just through this program here. Yeah. We need more of this and males need to lead with this and just, and listen, we need to listen. I, yeah, was, I might just be there because there's women, women are very, I don't know. I think I'm like, you know, I think it has to go to also to the women. You know, there's always been this kind of like, oh, it's always the men's fault. It's like, ah, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm not about, I'm not a feminist at all. Yeah, okay. I'm all, I'm all about equal. Yeah. Equal, equal, yeah. equal, equal. You know, like, it's not that, you know, you know, you know, we are getting into like another different debate. You know, I think there's a, there's a fault in both ways. That's so, you know, society has always made it more than men's fault. Yes, but that's the society. Yeah. Women are yeah. At, you know, there, there, you know, there's, there's some crazy, crazy women out there. <laughs> yeah, there's some absolutely. crazy men out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this um, isn't like, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm not trying to speak in absolutes. I'm thinking just in general, the trend is, I think males can lead with this and it's a problem yeah. uh, that males need to listen to. And um, I think it starts with us. And in terms of, I mean, you mentioned that, you um, uh, the equality and, and it's females have complained and rightfully so much more than males have with this. So I mean, yeah. I think it, it's, it's just all your guys' fault. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and just going back to, well, it, it goes both ways. I mean, females have a responsibility as well. Uh, when it comes to, I mean, this is quite extreme. I'm going to get to, but in general, the average male is more aggressive, stronger, yeah bigger, more intimidating, and probably has a greater temper than the female. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that by itself, and the fact that the gym is very physical, it is yeah. very physical. I mean, regardless of what your goals are, there's always going to be a secondary or tertiary goal of you do want to look good naked. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. You do want to look good. So there's a very physical aspect of it in the gym. So just by that nature, I think males can do a lot better because we're already 50 yards ahead of females when it comes to comfort level, when it comes to responsibility, just because we are this, that type of species. So, I mean, females are already at a disadvantage. And again, yeah. I'm not just speaking on behalf of gyms. I'm speaking about all the workforces. I wanted to bring this up because I don't know the solutions, but yeah. I do know it's a problem. Yeah, so. it is. And, you know, it, it's not as much of a problem. Like you said, it's definitely a problem in commercial gyms in the workplace, 100%. I, I, I can see on you know, on my level um, in my gym, it's, it doesn't seem to be a problem and issue because all the women and men get along and they all respect each other and yeah. they're all treated as equals. However, I will tell you that the female clients that I do train occasionally, if they go on vacation or if they're training at a commercial gym on their own, 
earphones in and as they like to tell me resting bitch face on because they don't want guys approaching them and i and i get that because when i'm working out i'm the same i don't want to be in a conversation i'm there to work out i don't you know you're my buddy i'll talk to you outside the gym after the workout's done i don't want to have a conversation about my stock portfolio or what i did over the weekend while i'm in the middle of a a deadlifting or squatting uh, sets no i don't want to do that It, it ruins my focus so i totally understand that and yeah i mean something does need to be done and luckily I can speak again for my gym. We don't have that issue. Brandon, I don't think you have that issue necessarily in your gym because you can not in our not in our newer studio. No, it's not much of an issue at all. I no. mean, I train a lot of doubles and they're females. I yep. mean, they're kind of watching their back and yep. whatnot. But I mean, it's something that we do want to eliminate yes. and, and get to the bottom of it. But you're right. For our, we're kind of lucky. Private studios um, don't have that much of a problem because you have a little bit more of a buffer in terms of, well, you have a capacity. It's a little bit more yep. personal stuff you're not going to get these luna tanks coming into the gym a little bit more of a controlled atmosphere yeah and it's under supervision as well so that's really key um um it's all house rules when you go into it and i'm not smashing commercial gyms because i have a commercial no. gym membership we need yeah. them but it, it's all house rules when you go in there i mean yeah. there's no responsibility except for the male to not be creepy and and what pilar said i mean females yeah. need to be respectful too yeah so I, I think at the end of the day it comes down to raising more awareness about the the situation right and putting program the- Putting programs like this out helps um, because a lot of men, let's face it, a lot of men are naive to the situation. They don't even think about it. They don't. I yeah. have a, I have a, you, you guys know my clientele is mostly with women. And I, yeah. I've had a couple of women that have bought, have brought their husbands or their boyfriends. And yeah. I, we love having them. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's such a fun, you know, I have a very loyal um, client, him and his wife come and I love using him as, you know, as our target. Well, this person is not, is, he's not doing it. Well, ladies, we're going to do more, you know? Yeah. It's just for like a very fun, you know, and he's an amazing guy. He just goes in there and it's all postnatal women and everybody's talking about babies and breastfeeding and all these things. And that's a different gay. dynamic though. <laughs> well, to your, to your point, Pilar, I mean, that just raises testament to the type of community you created and to illustrate Nick, yes. Nick and my oh, point. My yeah, Nick, and my point, I mean, you could raise awareness and you're the quintessential business and community creator here because that's what we're trying to create um, universally, not just with one trainer, but commercial gyms and private gyms. You're the, you're the prime example of how can, you can make it work. So your voice matters. And that's why I really wanted to bring this up because you're female and I wanted to hear your point of view and you've made it a success in your business, which is awesome. We could do it. I want to get better at it. We as males can get better at it. Commercial gyms can learn to embrace it. So you're a prime example of how you can make it work. It is possible. Right. Clara, you should do a seminar. (laughs) Go in on that. Okay. I need to learn. We need to, Nick and I need to learn from you. Yeah, we do. And there's a lot of guys out there that need to learn as well. Yeah. Um, All right, guys, let's switch topics here. Okay. Topic number two. Apologize for the dog barking. I hate those things. You hate dogs? I have two and they just bark me down. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, stop number two. We're going to talk a little bit about body image. Okay. Um, I want to actually, I want, I want both your feedback on this actually with this one. When you guys are working with your clients, what do you gauge your results on? Do you look primarily at the scale? Do you look, do you do measurements? I mean, what, and as trainers, what should we t- be telling our clients to look at as progress? It, should it be like, because I mean, all, everyone's going to the gym for results, results. But a lot of people, you know this, they'll look at the scale for results. Hey, I lost two pounds this week. That must be good. But, but did you lose two pounds of fat or did you lose two pounds of muscle? Did you lose two pounds of water? Um, and then other people will look at their measurements. Um, you know, what are we looking at here? Is, is body image all about how much you weigh and how you look? Or, you know, what should we be looking for as results, as leading forward progress in the gym with our physiques? Clara, I'm going to go to you on this one first. I'm going to take you guys at, uh, in a little, come on, Luna. Sorry, guys. I'm We're going on a field trip, Brandon. <laughs> so that's, you know what, that's a very interesting uh, point because I, in, back in the day, I've always been, I used to be very aware of my weight. I've always struggled with my weight growing up and I was never one of the uh, meaty side. And, you know, throughout the years, things have changed. And after, as a woman, after you, you know, if it's a young lady, if it's a young girl, I could have some young girls that come and train with me. They're already dealing with a lot of body images. Kids are not nice these days. You're fat. You're ugly. You know, there's a lot of like that um, physical thing. My, all, I have always told my clients is 
Are you feeling strong? Are you feeling healthy? Can you run after your kids? Can you go up and down the stairs a few times without coughing and puffing? Are your jeans feeling better? And even after having kids, it was always to advertising, oh, get it back into your pre-pregnancy genes. Guess what? Your body has changed. You might never get back into those pre-pregnancy genes, but are you stronger? Are you healthier? Are you, are you able to do things with your kids? And for me, body image, now that I have kids, I have, you know, I never thought of, you know, I always wanted to have boys because body image is not so high on men in general, right? It's like, oh, are you strong? You have pecs, you know? But now that I have a girl, I've never wanted to deal with that because, you know, th there's always that issue of body image. Is she a little bit on the chubby side? Is she skinny? What, what, what does she look like? Um, I think my main, you know, message is like, worry about how you feel. Are you exercising four or five days a week? Better than maybe two times before. That's Behaviors. Behaviors, right? Are you eating breakfast instead of skipping breakfast and not eating until like three o'clock? Yeah. That's a win. Are you are you eating more vegetables during the day? Yeah. You know, are you eating more? You know, there's so many different things. And when you have those good behaviors on check, it's like, okay, what's our next goal? Do you want to run a marathon? Let's train for that. Do you want to, I don't know, go hiking the Kilimanjaro? Okay, let's work on that. Have a goal versus what is my scale saying? Because the scale lies. I'm right. always, you know, there's so many times that I haven't made a lot of posts of like, this is my picture art. 160 pounds yeah and this my picture are 162 pounds yeah and people are like wow like oh my god like the you scale has moved but you know i'm i'm feeling good and my yeah. back feels good you know it's just it's just all about those behaviors and just throw out the window the scale so you I don't yeah every once in a while <laughs> so with your clients you don't necessarily base your results on aesthetics no okay okay right now I try yeah. to get out of that because it's not it's not mentally um it's not a positive uh behavior okay so you've been training for four weeks you've been training really really hard yeah you've been eating meals you've been training no missing workouts and the yeah. scales nothing yeah that's really demotivating for anybody who's been putting so much time and effort 100%. but i think they put up a pair of jeans and they're like oh my gosh they fit better or yeah. i have my buckle, my belt buckle, one one number to the side. Yeah. Those are more, in my opinion, better, more maintainable and achievable goals than a couple of pounds in the scale. Sure. Yes. Okay. I could not agree with a lot of what you said. Like I, you just nailed it on the button there. Uh, things I'll say. First of all, uh, you said kids are means. Uh, kids are mean these days. Uh, they were they were mean when I was a kid too. They're always mean. Um, it's not their fault. That's just how they grow up. And I agree with you. Uh, secondly, you you mentioned oh, pick a different goal. Um, that's awesome. Yes, try to divert them away from aesthetic goals. There's nothing wrong with aesthetic goals. But do you want to do a pull up? Do you want to run a marathon? Do you want to lift 100 pounds? Um, do you want to be able to when you when you're in an airplane? Do you want to be able to lift your suitcase up into the overhead? Yes. The little things like that. You want to divert them from that because. And if they work towards that and they succeed that, they're happy. And as a secondary or tertiary um, byproduct of that, they probably do look better. They probably do, uh, their body composition has changed. So that's really important. And I like the fact that um, you focus on other aspects besides looks. And I think that, and I, I'm pretty sure you already do this, what needs to happen is this needs to be established right from the consultation, right from the assessment. Yeah. My first, my two, I mean, it's not necessarily the first questions that I ask, but the two most important questions I ask um, during the consultation is, could you please define what success is and how do you measure it? How, how three weeks from now, how are you going to be happier than you were three weeks, yeah. uh, two to three weeks, okay, six weeks? And how do you want to evaluate that? And then my, my other question is, uh, define your perfect coach to me. So, I mean, how am I going to help you get there type of thing? What, is, what does your, visualize, shut your eyes, and what does your perfect coach look like so i think the first question is more relevant to what we're talking about here um i want them to define what success is yeah. and is it numerical <clears throat> is it and yeah you're right the scale i mean it does tell some truth but it just doesn't tell the whole story um it weighs everything in you it doesn't tell you how much of it is muscle 
how much of it is water, stuff like that. It just tells one truth, not the whole truth. So it is a metric. So if my clients want to use that as a metric, that's one metric. But I remind them that's one way of measuring. There's yeah. other ways too. So exactly. do you feel better? Do you have yeah. more energy? Has your work productivity in- improved? Um, are you better in bed? Are you performing better, um, performing better in your sport? Okay. Um, has your marriage gotten better? Stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff like that you can't see in the mirror. You can't yeah. see yeah. in the mirror, but stuff has improved. And probably even more importantly, have your health markers improved. Yes. Because yes. you don't really have to lose weight to improve your health markers. Just no. by increasing lean mass, your health markers will improve. And just by movement itself, yeah. insulin sensitivity, glucose uptake, that all improve both chronically and acutely exactly. after exercise. So I really like what you said, Pilar, and I could not agree more. You know, you know, you, I, go ahead, Nikki. I was going to say, I, I, when you're talking about the aesthetics component, I, I, I have to say, I blame social media, the prevalence of social media for this quite a bit. Because I have a lot of younger clients that are coming to see me now in their 20s. And they'll say to me, especially the guys, they'll say, I want to look like The Rock. And I'll say, well, if you want to look like The Rock, you better go do what The Rock is doing. And I'm not just talking about eating and training. I'm talking about things behind the scenes that you both know. But a lot of people don't know. And I'm not bad enough in The Rock. I'm just saying, like, know your facts and know that. And choose your parents. (laughs) Choose your parents. Your genetics are a big factor. But, you know, Brandon, I do a weekly check-in with my online clients. And I use this scale, but I always stress that I'm only using the scale as a guide just to see how your weight fluctuates when I make changes to your diet. That's it. I could care less if you didn't lose two pounds or if you lost three pounds or if you gained three pounds. It doesn't matter to me. It's more about how you look, how you feel, your quality of sleep, your energy levels in the gym. Um, Libido is one of them. So that to me is more important. And you know, when I was younger, I used to put a lot of emphasis on aesthetics. I, I competed in bodybuilding shows. Pilar, you did fitness competitions. We went down that rabbit hole. It's not a good rabbit hole to go down. And it's, there's so many ways to gauge success. Like you said, it's not all about necessarily what you look like on the outside. It's how you're feeling. Like you said, you can, you can lift the suitcase over your head when you put it on your, on, on the plane, how you feel, right? That's so important. It's not necessarily all about looks. Uh, Pilar, sorry, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say that um, most of my clientele are women. Yeah. And they're always a lot of the woman body goes through such a huge, huge changes yeah. when we we have children that we we forget sometimes what we have done. And I always have to, even myself, I have to remind myself. And my husband is great at it. It's like, honey, just don't forget. You just you just had a baby. Yeah. You know, you just have to give yourself some time and your body's gonna change. You might not be able to do what you used to used to do, but yeah. As long as you keep trying and as long as you keep training hard and eating healthy, yeah. things are change. And that's what I keep, you know, I keep telling, you know, I keep telling my kids is like, just eat healthy. You want, you want to be strong. I don't know why being strong is so important to me. <laughs> no, it's, it's true though. You're right. You know, the two big things that you mentioned there again is, is, is setting realistic goals, being realistic yeah. as well. Like, okay, hey, you're not going to look like Superman when you're 95 years old. Yeah. But you also mentioned behaviors again. So realistic goals and behaviors is really, really important when we're talking to our clients, especially in the initial, in the initial few sessions, right? Because you want, because they're going to have some lofty goals. And then like what Nick said, they're not going to know any better. They're not going to no. know. They think they, they see the rock on television and say, well, I'm going to look at the rock. He can do it. I can do it. I mean, they think, they might think it happens like that. And social media makes you think, makes you think like you can hack the body. I hate the word hack. Yeah. Social media makes you think that you can hack the body and lose weight really, really quickly. You got Dr. Oz, you got the rock doing all, and I'm not hacking the rock either. That's not a good example because the rock is actually quite intelligent, but I mean, <laughs> nobody's bad that. mouthing the rock. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to get sued here. <laughs> but the social media influencers will make it. I mean, again, it's about a lot of it. It's about money and fame, but also yeah. they're trying to, um, they're trying to sell you on something that really just, it doesn't work for 99.999% of the people. So um, yeah. I like what Pilar said, real, realistic goals, keep trying, keep trying and behaviors and through time, you know, through time, it's like a journey, you know, yeah. you're going to, you're going to look back, you're going to look back on the, when you're hiking a mountain, you're going to look down. Oh, that's how much I've accomplished. So yeah, you know, just that, whatever you, I always say is your goal has to be, you first got to be able to achieve it, you know, whatever that might be, one pull up, two pull ups, three pull ups, and from there, and then have something maintainable. Yeah. Like when I run, for example, my nutrition programs, is at some point I was telling my clients, if you deplete your body from something, sometimes at some point you're going to crack and yeah. 
going to lose it. And that's going to set you back even more on your goals. Yeah. Baby okay. steps. Get up those goals. Have those um, good weeks of like good behaviors. It takes weeks to yeah. actually embrace a behavior. Embrace, yeah. Did I yeah, say it embrace, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a behavior in your mind, like brushing your teeth. Yeah. Like it's, I don't need a reminder. Yeah. Well, who am I kidding? That's Sometimes, yeah. Like, and when it comes to... <laughs> Yeah, and all these things are just, you know, drink water. Uh, it's little things that, oh, I'll never remember to do that. But if you just keep doing it every day for like four, five, six weeks, isn't you. Yeah, behavior yeah. changes. And, it, and all these steps and all these behavior changes will add up to so many different performance outcomes. You'll lose yeah. track. And because you diverted them away from athletic goals, um, they're going to, they are going to achieve it as a byproduct. I mean, and going back to athletic goals, okay, and again, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with having wanting to look better and looking better in the mirror. Um, I think people need when you when it comes to setting realistic goals, uh, I think people need to realize that we are our own worst critic, yeah. and you're going to be the last to notice yes. the fat loss Always. in your body, Always. and you're going to notice, and especially the fat. You know, for guys, it's the gut. For ladies, it might be the thighs. Yeah. That stubborn area where you want to lose that fat—that's usually the last place you're going to lose the fat. So when we're talking about all these realistic goals, trying to divert them away from, yeah. you know, from these athletic goals, we also want to say, you know what, we're our own worst critic here. Yes. Okay. We, we notice the mole on our face at yeah. the long jaw. We notice that that's never going to go away, but yeah. other people are going to notice it too. And I warned them just so you know, <laughs> a million times ahead, people are going to compliment you before you see any difference. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And, you know, I always tell my clients, it's okay to have a little bit of vanity. I think I personally think that's okay. If that gets you into the gym, great. But aesthetics cannot be your only goal because it's a very short-term goal. Because guess what? We're all getting older. I've got wrinkles. I mean, people tell me about this all the time. I say, you got to get some Botox. I'm okay with that. No, I'm okay with that. I'm getting older. But if this you're is great. Only, yeah. And the thing is, you're, as Polaro said, our bodies are changing. So you have to have that long-term goal and say, okay, am I feeling better? Am I doing better than I did yesterday? Am I, am I better than I am this year than I was last year? That's more important. You can't just base it on aesthetics only, right? So just to finish this topic off, Brandon, how do you gauge, if you could say one word, how do you gauge your client's success? What would you base it on? Um, they're overall, they're overall, yeah. they're happier in their daily lives. They're getting okay. better and better in yeah. their daily lives. That just is feeling better and they keep coming back, not because they need me, but they want, they just love uh, coming back. Um, I don't want to be needed. I yeah. want to be liked. So. Okay. Pilar? Oh, couldn't agree more. I, I want, I think for my clients or whatever, I, I want them to, I want them to miss and want into exercise. Yeah. Like if you miss a couple of workouts, they feel it and they're like, oh, I miss my workout. You yeah. know, when I miss my workouts or I get busy, I'm like, I get grumpy. Yeah. My, like, Go for a workout. Yeah. I'm not being busy to be around, you yeah. know? I yeah. want them to feel that this is something good for them that is going to be with them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Yes. And what I try to, you know, we, my husband and I try to put in our kids, sports are good. You want to be strong. You're going to be fit. You want to be healthy. This is something that is going to talk you, stay with you forever. Yeah. Yes. One really quick thing I'll add to, because no, you made a good point is that uh, as coaches, and I'm, I'm using a quote from a book here is that we want to give our clients keys to the ignition so they can, they can make healthy choices on their own. Nothing thrills me more. I mean, besides the client being happy, and nothing thrills me more than when a client goes away and without my telling them, without reminding them, they find a hotel gym and they work out three or four times a week on their own. Or they come back, they say to me, you know what? Instead of having ice cream, and there's nothing wrong with having ice cream, um, I had, I made myself a delicious fish with some broccoli and some potatoes or something like that. Yeah. When they've made these choices on their own, that's great. And that's giving the keys to the ignition. And that's what I want. I want them to come back because they want to, not because, oh, I forgot how to live healthy. So Pilar made some great points there. I think as trainers yeah. too, it's important that we emphasize it's more about how you feel than how you look. And that's important too, because if someone's signing up to work with yourself or for you, Pilar, or with me, I, I say that from the very beginning. I say aesthetics is one component, one, that's it. If you're looking to get the I hate this term, but the booty gains, or, you know, when you hear people talk about, I want gains, I want this. I, I, to me, that's nonsense. I say, you're with the wrong trainer. Yes, I do help people prepare for bodybuilding shows and fitness shows. You use resolution. It's like, yeah. well, summer body. It's like, well, guess what? It's May. You're not going to get that summer body in two weeks, no. you know? 
And hey, you know what? If you end up looking better naked as a result of working with us in the gym, great. That's that's a that's a that's a great component, but that's only one. I want to see blood work done. For me, I always ask my clients once a year, I like to see blood work. I like to see how they're looking, how everything's feeling on in, internally, what's going on in there. Um, and it's like Brandon said before, how you feel, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we ran out of time for the third topic. Yeah. Just we'll happened. save it for the next one. We'll, save <laughs> we'll, it for the next one. <laughs> we'll have to do it again. That, that's right. We'll, we'll, we'll have to do it again because we always try to keep these great debates to about 30, 35 minutes top. So we're in a little bit over time here today, which is fine because I know you guys are both game to keep doing these weight debates, especially considering that we don't know what's going on with these lockdowns. I think Brandon, well, you told me it's, we're going to find out in the next that. hour or so, right? I just got, I just got an email saying that they are going to reopen, there but I didn't go. see the restrictions. So yeah. Um, yeah. So we are going to be back in business. Uh, business will be limited, but um, we just have to be patient. But um, I did just receive, receive an email. So right after this talk, we're going to take a look and see what we're up for. Do you guys, yeah, go ahead. Do you guys feel like you're on like an, uh, an episode of Survivor right now? <laughs> I, I do. I feel like I'm on yeah. that TV show. You never know what's going to happen the next day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, to your point, I could not agree more, but a bit on the, on the happy side too, because this is our livelihood here. And it's yeah. and it's and it's been a little ridiculous here. It's been long. It's been two years and yeah. gyms have been safe. So yeah. I think I think we, we need to not be painted with the same airbrush here. Exactly. So, I agree. Yeah. Guys, this video is going to be going up on Tuesday, January 18th. So it should be going up. Actually, that's later on today. So we'll put cool. it up. And uh, yeah, the wave debate part two. And we're definitely going to have to wave debate part three because we've got another topic. And I know we're going to have more topics to talk about. But uh, I want to thank you both for coming on. I know you're both, even with the lockdowns, you guys are both really busy. I know that. So I really appreciate you both coming on today. Thanks for having me, Nick. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day today. You too. Thanks, guys. See you later on. Bye. Bye-bye.